Hey, Desmond Du here from No Sleep Creative. Today we're going to create this wavy true animation which I discover on Behance. It's from a piece called IC from Flat White Motion Studio based in Sydney and Qingdao, China. I was really astounded by everything in the animation. Each scene seemed so fun and exciting so I decided to recreate one and learn from it. The next thing you know, it's a tutorial. Before we begin, let's analyze this scene. I looked at it several times and play it frame by frame and stabilize the animation so I can look at it even more clearly. And here are my observations. There are five things we need to make. The orb, the tree waves, and the ribbon of ovals. The waves are using the same technique and it's not as difficult as you think. The biggest challenge will be the ovals. But for now, let's start with making the orb. In After Effects, let's hit Command N to create a new composition. I'm going to do Full HD, 25 frames a second, 100 frames long with a white background. Let's double click on the Ellipse tool to create a shape and let's change our fill to white. And then let's press UU on our shape layer and I uncheck Constraint Proportion and set size to 50 by 50. And we're going to Command D on the shape layer to duplicate the second one. And let's open it up and go to Transform and set the scale to 200 and then the opacity down to 50%. Let's also change the fill color to the cyan color over here. And the last thing we're gonna do is to just put this ellipse behind ellipse one. So we have this orb. And now we can animate its position and we're gonna write an expression. So the expression, first of all, we can just separate dimension. We just wanna hover it in the Y axis. So let's option click on the Y position and we're gonna type in wiggle parentheses 1 comma 200 comma 1 comma 1 time and let's uh let's play it and see what happened so you can see it's a it's a wiggle function but it's instead of like, like it being jumping back and forth it's a it's a very smooth wiggle so this is called a detailed wiggle and you can learn more about it on uh, expression.ahancer.com to learn about the syntax or like what is it what it does specifically but we won't get into that. Uh, for now, we just know that it's hovering. The next thing we want to do is to just reposition this orb a little bit higher on top of the screen and just rename this shape layer to orb and we can, uh, we can start making our, our waves. So the waves are actually uh, a set of triangles and uh, so let's create those triangles by using a polygon tool. Double click on it and we can change the fill color to something like this uh, cyan again. And let's press UU to open our properties and under polystar path, let's change the point to tree. And we're going to right click, transform, and then fit to come height. And so this was, we'll make it make sure it's like touching at the top and the bottom. And we're going to pre-comb this triangle. So let's pre-comb it. And I'm going to name it triangle, or I can type in the symbol, uh, which is option J, and click OK. And uh, we're gonna need tree triangles, and we're gonna just duplicate uh, in my in my project panel tree triangle. So let's rename this to triangle two, and triangle tree. Okay. So for the first one, uh, so the, we gotta we're just gonna colorize them differently. So the first one will be the the we're gonna just give it a gradient fill. So let's do that, and let's command shift H to show the handles if it's off, and we're just gonna you know. Move the handles like that, gradient handles. The next thing we're gonna do is just change the gradient fill color to something more purplish. So I grab that. And then let's also invert our colors like that. And then click OK. And let's go into our second one. So this will be for our back wave. And this is fine as it is. We can just reduce opacity down to 50%. And for the third one, we just want no fill. And then we can set the stroke to be about one. Actually, no, let's keep it two. And then uh, let's close this. And then let's go back to our demo folder, our demo project, and let's drop in our two other triangles over here. So let's put it be below the orb and just position it like that. This when it's touching and let's parent it to the orb. I'm gonna also go back into uh, my my triangle and just get rid of that palette and let's just play it so you can see it's it's following the orb when it's hovering and then now we can play with the wave warp effect 
So we're going to go to the first one and we're going to just go to effects and preset panel and type in wave warp. We're going to set the direction down to at 180 degree or 0%. And we're going to set the wave height to 40 by 300, a wave speed of 1.5, and we're going to pin to the top edge. So it will be always fixed to that orb right there. And we can do this, we can copy this and apply it to the other triangles as well. And uh, we want to just offset the, we just want to offset the, the face for the second one, which be, and make it a little bit bigger. Let's make it actually about 150%. So we can see it behind and position it down below. And uh, let's change the phase to maybe about uh, maybe 90 degree. So it's not, it's not consistent. And let's put the triangle number three on top. So we get the stroke. And uh, let's also uh, go back to our triangle and also scale them accordingly. So we want to uncheck constraint proportion. So let's make this... Uh, about 25% smaller, so minus 25. And then, so it's a, like a thinner triangle. And let's also go back to uh, triangle one and go back to scale, uncheck constraint proportion and minus 50% for this one. So we get varying sizes of triangles. And the next thing we wanna do is to create an adjustment layer. And then let's call this mirror and we're gonna get the mirror effect from the effects and preset panel. Double click on it. And we're just going to read, uh, take the 1920 20 divided by 2, and this will uh, mirror it perfectly in the center. Cool. So the next thing we want to do is to just, uh, we want to bulge, kind of have more tapering for the main wave and more bulge at the bottom. So we can just select it over here, and we're going to just type in warp in the effects and preset panel, and double click on it, and you can see it. Uh, looks really weird uh, that's because let's set everything down to zero and also set vertical distortion to 100 percent you can see it's a tapering happening already which looks pretty good and if you want more like uh thickening at the bottom we can just select the, the best uh, warp style is actually bulge and if you set the band to about 50 percent negative 50 percent would be better nope oh and i forgot to switch it to vertical yes so switch the Warp axis to vertical and the band to 50%. So if you turn it off, you can see it's just warping like normally. Right? You can see there's more warping at the bottom. So uh, that's it for the wave warps. Pretty simple, right? The last thing we want to do is to create the oval, the ribbon of oval. So let's create a new composition. Let's call this, let's call it ribbon. And we're going to change the width to 500 by 900 and click OK. And we're gonna make an oval by using ellipse tool. Double click on it. So it will just create, it'll fit the whole screen. And then I want you to open up, go to the path, and let's give it a fill. Uh, so let's give it a fill of this color. Okay, this never works the way I want to. So I'm just gonna do it manually. And yep, that color's fine, no stroke. And let's go to ellipse path, and uh, let's right click on ellipse ellipse path and convert to Bezier path and then you press command shift J H if you don't have your handles visible and we're going to press G to and to get to a pen tool and option click on the top and bottom of our uh, of our points so we can make it an oval or like a like a tapered oval so let's press uh, S and reduce the scale down to 25% and we are going to go in, back into the shape layer and add in a repeater. And we are going to open our repeater and set about 15 copies. And then let's go back to transform and let's set the position to zero by about 1,800. So we want two sets of color. That's why we're doing this. So let's actually duplicate uh, command D on the first set and then just move it down. And we're just going to change the fill color to something else. So we're going to change the fill to uh, this color over here. Uh, maybe some, something like that. Okay, cool. And then we are just going to align it. Command Shift H to turn off handles. And you can see it's aligned. Let's push it a little bit downwards. Like that. Okay, cool. So they're touching. Perfectly touching. 
Okay, cool. So once we have that done, let's parent shape layer two to shape layer one. And we're gonna grab, uh, animate the position of the, of the, of shape layer one. Let's command shift eight to show handle again. And we're just gonna start from, we're just gonna start from the bottom. So actually let's just scrub it, scrub it down to about to where it ends, about negative, I think it was about 5,000. So let's try about, yes, negative, negative 5,500. So around there, and we can go down to the end frame and we're going to uh, go, we're gonna just reduce it in, the mul in multiples of like a factor of 900. So we can add 900 and it'll still it'll look the same. So that's pretty slow. Let's add another 900 and see what happens. See how fast it can get plus 900. So a little bit faster. And if you want, I guess you can add 450 to uh, just speed, speed it up a little bit and you loop completely over here. So that's to, for the repeating ovals. Let's, bring, let's go back to our demo layer and let's bring in that ribbon down here. So you might ask what happens if this oval is more than, you know, if I have a, a duration of 300 and the oval, I'm going to solo it. This oval is just going to end at frame 100. So all you have to do is go time, enable time remapping, option click on the stopwatch, and type in loop bow. And we're just going to click outside, and we're going to play it. I also make sure you, once you enable time remapping, you can extend the out point. And ta-da, you can see that it's playing perpetually. Now the problem is that you notice there's a flicker over here. And that's because of the frame number. So instead of ending at 100, you want to end at 99. And you can see if I were to play it, you'll play it perpetually. Cool. And let's position this. Let's uh, in the center using my align panel. And let's place it under the orb. And let's see. Let's place it under the orb. Let's also select other, let's extend other layers to be as long. I'm going to label the green orb so we can see it clearly. And let's select my triangles and go time freeze on last frame. So it'll always be there. And now let's copy the wave, the warp effect from the triangle and paste it onto the ribbon. And you can, let's just put it some, position it properly and parent it to the orb as well. So the final thing is for us to make the ribbon stay within the waves or make sure it doesn't expand too much uh, beyond the waves. So we can go back to our main triangle and maybe just increase the warp to a hundred, you know, so it, it kind of expands more. And we can also just, uh, let's see, we could just make it a little bit bigger in the X axis like that. Maybe not too much, maybe just about 110%. And we are done. The last thing you wanna do is to add this, like it traveling through the background. And here's how I did it. So I create a, I create a comp, I create like a, like a composition and uh, with all these gradient circles uh, laid out in Y axis. And then after that, I did the same thing, same thing with the Y background. So uh, for the for the background, it's a little bit smaller, uh, and then the foreground one, it's just a little bit bigger, for some balls, and then I parent the position of the uh, of the background to the foreground. I then animated the foreground from the bottom to the top, and I set my blending mode to linear burn with fifty percent. So when I play this, as you can see. All looks like it's flying up, but it's just an illusion that we created. And we're done! I hope this video has been helpful. Please check out the works of Flat White Motion Studio. The link is in the description below. If you like this video, please subscribe and like for more. We need to let more people know about how awesome this tutorial is. <laughs> I'm joking. That's all I have for you guys. I'll see you next time.